Hello, my name is Keith Thompson. I'm with the Armadale Church of Christ here in Western Australia. We're continuing on our study of the things that are difficult to understand. The Bible tells us people take those things that are difficult and distort them as they do the rest of the scriptures. The last thing we want to do is to distort the scriptures. So we look at these difficult things and we see what the answer is. This week, we're going to be looking at the idea of pastors. Now, in the religious world today, we hear this term pastor often. I'm often called a pastor. But is the Bible meaning of the word pastor the same as the way it is used in the world today? Well, let's go to the Bible and look what it says. We're going to start over in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. And it says there, And he gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors and teachers. Here, the Apostle Paul is giving us the offices in the church. And they include uh, apostles, uh, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. Now, it's that pastor that we're interested in today. Now, the translation of that word pastor is of a shepherd. In fact, in our English translations, Ephesians 4 and verse 11 is the only place that we have it translated as pastor. Now, you would imagine that, as we see in the world today, that the word pastor would be practically on every page of the New Testament. But no, this is the only place where it is rendered pastor as such. But it's far from an uncommon word in the New Testament. And we can go by looking at the other places that it's used to get an idea of how the Bible understands this word. So we're going to go over to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 25. And notice what it, says, what it says there. For you were continually straying like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. <laughs> of course, this is talking about Jesus. And here Peter calls Jesus the shepherd and guardian of our souls. It's the same word as we have translated in pastor in Ephesians chapter 4. Now Peter knew that Jesus was the shepherd for what Jesus said as recorded in John chapter 10 and we're going to read verses 11 through 15 where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who is not the owner of the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and not concerned about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. Even as the Father knows me, I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with this passage. Jesus is the good shepherd. This is the same word that we're talking about. This word that can be translated pastor. Jesus is the good shepherd. Well, let's have a look at it being used, the same word being used for men in the New Testament. Who We know that Jesus is the good shepherd, but who in the New Testament are called shepherds? So that, that'll help us to understand. So we go over to the book of Acts in Acts chapter 20. And notice what we read in Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Be on guard for yourselves and all the flock among which the Holy Spirit made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he poured out with his own blood. Ah, now this is a fascinating verse here. Because here we have men told that they are to shepherd, that they are to pastor the church of God. But who is it that Paul's talking about? Now one would imagine the way that it's commonly used today, he's talking to the preachers, to the ministers, uh, the evangelists, that they're told to shepherd the church of God. But that's not what we read. In fact, Let's go and have a look at the context. This is Paul. 
He's traveling to, to Jerusalem in what becomes his last time there. He's arrested and taken off to Rome there. But he's traveling to Jerusalem and he's in a hurry. And he doesn't want to stop in, the, in Ephesus to speak to the, to, to the people there. So he calls for the elders to meet him. So we see in Acts chapter 20 and verse 17. From Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called to him the elders of the church. When we read in verse 28, Be on guard for yourself and for all the flock among which the Holy Spirit made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Clearly the context is telling us that the ones who have to shepherd, the ones who have to pastor, are indeed the elders. And that's... that's continuous throughout the New Testament. Now, the Bible teaches us that the pastors in the church are the elders. It's part of their job to feed and guard the flock. The preachers, like myself, the evangelists, the ministers, they're never called pastors. This is the modern, ma modern man-made use of the term. So we need not get confused by this. People may misuse the term, but if we're going to follow the Bible, and the Bible only, never adding to it or taking away from it, we will use Bible terms for Bible things. So an elder... Well, he is the pastor. There are three terms used to describe elders. Elders, overseers, and shepherds or pastors. And we can see them in this passage. A preacher or evangelist is not the pastor. It is the elder who is the pastor. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions about this subject, you know, we always welcome your comments and your questions. Please put them down in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed this video, why don't you subscribe and, and like it? And come back and see us next time as we continue to study through the Bible. Thank you and goodbye.